For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite. Good morning, everyone, and it is truly morning as it's 10 o'clock here in Saratoga. Welcome to Talking Horses, the 40th and final Talking Horses of the 2020 Saratoga Meet. I'm Andy Serling, soon to be joined by Tom Law of the Saratoga Special, and this is horseracing.com to discuss the final steeplechase race of the day, followed by Anthony Stabile to talk about the rest of today's 14-race extravaganza. We have the mandatory payout in the Empire Six, and of course... We want to say one big final thank you to Saratoga Water for being a wonderful sponsor of our show, Talking Horses, this summer. Head over to Naira Bets. If you're not a member of Naira Bets, no better time than the present to sign up. We will match up to $200 of your initial deposit. Use the promo code SPA and become a member of Naira Bets and play the Empire Six through Naira Bets. Use that $200 deposit match to perhaps get a piece of the Jackpot carryover, $558,777. Mandatory payout, the final six races. Races 9 through 14 will be starting the Empire Six in the ninth race. And finally, I want to remind people for one final time, the last Saturday Live of the Saratoga Summer. We will be on from noon to 6.30 today, covering races 2 through 14. Head to naira.com backslash Saturday Live to find out what networks we'll be covering. And, of course, we'll be back in action at Belmont Park beginning on Friday, September 18th. Tom, big sigh of relief. You made it through. Made it through. We got, uh, we got one more edition, though. We're going to do a Saturday follow-up uh, to the Derby, closing weekend of Saratoga some action on the jump races, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But, uh, yeah, big sigh of relief. Uh, Saturday was a big addition for us, and glad to uh, see the finish line. Is this kind of the end of the, of the jump season as well because they can't really run the, 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 the hunt meets? Uh, some of the – there are some meets on the schedule uh, in uh, Maryland and in Virginia. Oh, there okay. are some meets. Uh, there aren't going to be any stakes uh, right. this fall. Nothing at Belmont? We're not going to be at Nothing Belmont? Nothing at Belmont this oh, year. So I think, oh. you know, the the the, the – Decision makers decided not to do the jumps this fall, unfortunately, so you won't get to see Joe. Or you. Or me. I know. Right? It's been it's a been pleasure. Fun. I've missed Joe, but it's been nice having yeah. you on. We appreciate your insights. I've enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's been great. I was kind of super bummed out last week when it was rained out. I was like, we didn't even get to say a proper goodbye. I know. Well, we're glad to have you, and we appreciate everything the Saratoga Special yeah. and this Search Racing does for us. And even though there hasn't been on track, you guys have been online, and you did, um, I want, how many? You did two a week? Which so we did two a week. We did Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, and then this coming the final one will be our 17th edition of the season. So uh, we did well. We did one on Thursday. We had an uh, inter internet slash power issue oh. <laughs> down in Maryland, uh, which so feels you can like blame five Joe years ago. For that. I do blame Joe for that. Yeah. I would too. <laughs> and then we were talking about the Derby. It seems like the Derby was about five years ago as well. Oof. And I think with Tislaw losing, it yeah. took a little bit of the air out of the balloon. It uh, did. In general. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously people were disappointed that he didn't he didn't win. He ran his race. I mean, I, like you said, I think the pace maybe could have been a little bit different with some. Uh, a little bit more pressure on authentic maybe earlier. Well, maybe the pace Manny was, was contentious, yeah. but it just that he became the horse who had to hunt right. because he didn't want to let authentic get away, and Manny was right to do that. But yeah. anyway, since we have 14, we unfortunately yeah. have to get to work here and discuss mm -hmm. today's card. Uh, the first race, we'll take a look at Iranistan, and Iranistan <coughs> won his last start for trainer Jonathan Shepard. Nice to see Jonathan get a couple wins of the meet yeah. and get his streak back together. Because, you know, Dale Romans is not that far away. He's only 18 <laughs> years away from... Tying Jonathan's 40-year that. record. That's uh, it's an, both are impressive numbers as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Incredible. Dale's, I, uh, Dale Dale's won a race here 29 straight years. Yeah, I saw him the day that he won, and he, he was, did. He was yeah. on his way out the door. He was heading back to the North Pole yep. after uh, <laughs> after making a trip down. <laughs> but I, I ran a stand. I think is the horse to beat in here. Uh, he's he's uh, you know comes off a win. 
got a little bit of extra time to maybe recover from that win. He's he's coming out of the August 13th race, which is at this same level, kind of this handicap level. Uh, he's going to pick up a little bit of weight, picks up five pounds, so he goes to the 158, which is, uh, you know, a pretty pretty heavy impost for him. But he won it at the 153 last time the right way, did it the way he should. And, you know, he's a horse that they had really high hopes on uh, for back in 2018, ran the Turf Riders Cup, some major stakes. Last year is kind of like a lost year. He just kind of, you know, never really found his form. And then even this year, his first race, he kind of pulls up in there, and I'm like, ah, poor Aranistan. But then last time, he just sort of shows he's he's back. So, uh, you know, credit to Jonathan and his team for, for, for getting him back and getting him in, back in the winner's circle. And it's interesting, the horse you pick second bodes well. Mm-hmm. Do you think he'll be forwardly placed? Because you've essentially got two horses. Aranistan runs his race. He's, he's a speed horse. He's going to yeah. be in front. Is it possible? I mean, Bodewell's not necessarily a big speed type, though he was in front last time when he lost to the right. talented snap decision. Yeah, I'm hoping that maybe the longer distance, maybe he'll settle a little bit more. So maybe he's not, uh, you know, battling for the lead if, if Bodewell is indeed the one to win. I do like the spacing from his last race, July 22nd to now, so he'll be pretty fresh. Kind of Leslie Young did the same thing with uh, the horse that won the New York Turf Riders Cup, had a little bit of a break, didn't run in the race kind of in the middle of the meet, the Smithwick, came back and won the Turf Riders. Maybe the same, similar setup with this horse. Uh, he comes out of a good race, you know, snap decision, Galway kid. Two really good horses, and that's in that novice stakes, the snap Kaiser. Snap decision's next race was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, yeah he's, he's just amazing. Yeah, Incredible. From all from uh, and and like we talked about, no stakes this year. Unfortunately, with the fall kind of being so many changes, Jack Fisher uh, basically pulled the shoes off his horses and turned them out. So they're done for really? the year. So the good, all his good horses are pretty much on the shelf now until a next miss snap decision. I know. It'd be bummer that he couldn't run again. You know, I always liked him when Suge had him, and he's yeah. good. Or you know, you want to know something funny about snap decision? When Bricks and Mortar won his non-winners of one mm. at Belmont, uh, um, that was. Uh, Belmont Stakes weekend, a number mm-hmm. of few years ago. Snap Decision, who finished third, was the favorite. Oh, yeah, I believe it. I believe <laughs> it's it. Yeah, kind of funny. <laughs> Snap Decision, like breaking the rules, like who runs today, right? I mean, it's kind yeah. of maybe the same age, maybe similar crop, six year olds, maybe yeah. five year olds. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. what was Bricks? Five last year? Yeah. So he's the same age as Bricks. So yeah. He's six. Yeah. yeah. He's been, to me, he's one of the coolest horses of the uh, entire meet. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, and, and amazing. And I like, I've talked to Jose Ortiz about him, and he likes watching his races. And, you know, he's like, yeah, every time he runs, I watch him, you know? No, it's great. It's been right. fun, yeah. Well, well, Rajiv Mirage was suggesting to, to both Irad and, and Jose on Twitter that they should ride in a jump race. Mm. And as I said to Jose, <laughs> you know, Rajiv has such a long storied career as a steeplechase rider <laughs> yeah. that he could really help them out. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a tight, tight joggies race. It might need an extra it is. mount. We're tied, right? 57. Who, who's going to win? Yeah. Who, who are you taking? I have a bet with Anthony, though. Jose. I, I, I took Jose. I got six to five on it. I have six Jose. lunches to five. I have Jose. Okay. Yeah. It's tough. You know, looking through the race today, it looks very close. It does. Tom, we appreciate all your help. Absolutely. During the meet. It's and, been fun. Uh, it's been great. It's been great Thank having you, you here, me. a fine addition and helpful in the steeplechase races. Anthony Stabile, also helpful. He will be back in just a moment to cover the rest of today's card. For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite.
Welcome back to Talking Horses, presented by Saratoga Water. He's the big A, Anthony Stabile. He's here. Are you ready to rock and roll for Let's 13? Do Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Race number two. Let's take a look at Bill DeSuit winning the Hudson last year. And Bill DeSuit uh, is making his second start of 2020. He was not able to get the mile. He did not run badly, though, in the commentator. I think the discussion here, and it's interesting, obviously, Todd Pletcher now with a five-win lead in the trainer's race. It's effectively over. Chad Brown has a lot of horses today. It's certainly mathematically possible. It's not like he's never had a huge day, but it seems pretty hard. But this one kicks it off, right? I mean, if Chad wins, you can say, well, he's, he's still alive. If Todd Pletcher wins and it's six, um, you could almost say it's officially over. What it's worth, first time for tagging the dirt. Chad's got tremendous numbers. They're short-priced horses, but they win, Anthony. How worry you, though, that, that Todd's horse, and we'll show a replay of him next, how worry you that he has a big tactical advantage over Fort Worth? Fort Worth has that's, I think, advantage. the biggest concern that Fort, Fort Worth is just Fort Worth is just going to be it's low in speed. A lot, yeah. He's just going to be, uh, you know, he'll be on a free, should be on the front end. That's why um, I picked him. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I, I just, I don't, you know, we'll show Fort Worth's last race. And I'll say something about Fort Worth's last race. I know the figure didn't come back that high at 87. Well, I mean, Gandy Dancing improved five points the next time. To be fair, Harris Bay improved only one point the next time, but he keeps getting left as well. Uh, this is a pretty good horse, Fort Worth. You will call this voodoo. The only knock I would have on the fact that he's going to be on the lead today is that he has never been on the lead. Uh, and I know that he's probably going to be able to go slower on the lead than he has been chasing. That's, that's but... But sometimes it's running style. Sometimes horses just don't like having to do all of the heavy lifting on the front end, even if it's not that what, heavy. What heavy lifting. lifting is he doing? Even if it's not that heavy. You mean lifting. like my heart belongs to Daddy? Andy, that's a, Anthony. Little, it's a little different. No, it isn't. Isn't it? No, it isn't. Going twenty five fifty is not a little different. I'll just make it simple. I don't agree with you. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Bill DeSuit's best races are better than Fort Worth, but Bill DeSuit is running a tag. That can't be right, right? Fort Worth I, has to, Fort Worth I has to be the favorite. I think Fort Worth going to be favored here yeah. because he has a tactical edge. You know, you almost wish they were tied going into this the way Irad and Jose are because this would be a huge battle. But obviously, Todd has, you know, seized a huge lead yesterday's card and feels like it's probably over. We'll see what happens in race number two. I can't never see over. the others. Andy, it's never over. We also remind people we don't have the scratches yet. So obviously, Correct. we can talk about horses that are scratched. Well, we've got to do what we got to do. There's no way we can do it and wait and, uh, or we'd be, we'd be talking about these races while they're running the first race. Race number three on the turf of Mile 16. And this race has been moved to the inner turf course. And the inner turf course, the rails are down as well at zero. Uh, Chad Brown has a very strong hand in here. Um, you went with the nine domain expertise, the kitten's joy on top. I did. Uh, half to uh, somebody. Oh, you did your work into today, a stakes like winner. Yes. It's half to a stakes winner, uh, who was my into mischief. Now, this one's by kitten's joy. A lot more turf influence for Make domain great, expertise. Make a great point. It's Joel Rosario. I went to that one. Andy went to editor-at-large. I went to editor-at-large, the, the Loop de Vega. It seems like after newspaper record, those Loop de Vegas are really in style. Seeing more U Loop de Vegas. As they should be. <laughs> as, I mean, well, we saw one win at Churchill Downs yep. for Brad Cox last week. And uh, I think I think the one that... that one, the one that won for Brad Cox was... What a, they eh. knew about that. Well, that horse just galloped. Yeah, it wasn't a fast race. Right to the, I know, but she uh, went to the lead. She just kept going. Was the horse that Clarvich won with earlier in the meet? The, oh. Uh, was that a Loop de Vega? Maybe. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember the name. That's that the Saturday the fourteenth, the fifteenth, I think. Anyway, I've got them one, two in here. How about some others? How about Ready Seeker for Todd Pletcher? It's more of a dirt family, um, the Title Seeker family. But there is enough turf, and the more than Readies, the more than Readies all feel like they can. They nail feel it. like they all turf, right? What a yeah. sire he's turned into. He's be. unbelievable. The uh, I believe they just stopped shuttling him. Bob Edwards and I were talking about this yesterday. I believe they just stopped shuttling more than Ready. Um, yeah, title seekers. A lot. There's a lot of dirt in that family. This horse actually has been working well out of the gate on the dirt. Uh, Todd's other one, Blue Kentucky Girl. Uh, we remember Laura Michelle, four sure. for seventeen. She won the PG Johnson up here, so that lets you know Bill that Mott, this, right? Yeah, that lets you know that she's by a, a mare that was a win early type. Carbay so, Diem though has not been a particularly no, effective no. turf sire. That's the reason I didn't have that horse. I'm always very curious as to those matings. One of only three sires in here that were trained by Todd Pletcher. Um, and that, that includes, I think, a couple horses that have uh, European <laughs> sires exactly, in here as right. well. The Vega, Dandy I have Man. Serene, who's a half to Indochine, who did win on the turf, but mm -hmm. obviously has not proven to be that strong. Um, we'll see how things play out on race number two, three. Race number four. 
I guess it's not inconceivable that Chad Brown wins races two, three, and four. It is not. Because he has the heavy favorite road to Meath. We'll take a look running on the turf last time. And I'm kind of with you where I almost took a shot with Nick Zito's horse as well. Um, I let you have this one, and I didn't think like, we needed to both take the same price horse in race number four. Uh, road to Meath is the kind of horse that looks better on paper than he is. And remember, we had this argument about him last time when you liked him, and I said, he might win, but he's, he's not that good. And no. he seems to have, he has found the right field, though. Yeah. I was able to kind of pick four, pick five, bail myself out that day. Um, you, you thought mandate was interesting, yeah. actually. That's right. I did not. Yeah, you know, I mean, the problem with, I think, Road to Meath is going to take a very short price. Two problems. And he's probably a better turf horse. That's not to say his dirt races don't get it done in here. I agree. Because they do. Um, some of them do. Some of them do. <laughs> They're not yeah. all that good. I just wanted a horse that was going to be two, three times the price. Uh, Ravinio's getting back to a fast track for the first time since May when he broke his maiden uh, going a flat mile. And this is seven furlongs, but it's still it's back to the one turn. Love to see my man. Would love to see my man Nick Zito well, grab one before. Nick's got a big shot in the next home. race as yeah, well, and I agree with you about Rune Vinio. As you say, getting back to dry races, he picks up Joel Rosario. I mean, he rode him on the turf last time. And what about Larceny on the rail? I don't think Larceny's impossible in this race. Like see Joseph Lee, the former assistant to Kieran McLaughlin, get a win. Um, his last race isn't that bad. You know, he was oddly involved in the pace and didn't run that badly in finishing third, running the best buyer speed figure he's ever, second best he's ever run. I mean, a, a figure of around the high six. 60s may very well win this mm -hmm. race. Yeah. So. My little fuzzy in here was the four, who I know had a perfect setup when the pace collapsed uh, back at Akrot in the slot, but Source made up a lot of ground. I know it was aided by the pace. I believe one of the two people up here picked and bet him that day. Congratulations, Andy. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? I'm picking him today. I I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm didn't, gonna, I, didn't I like I, 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 I saw his did. horse and I felt like I, I, feel like I got lucky with this horse. I think you did. It was yeah. New Year's Eve, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I was watching the race on the subway on the way home. You were. You yeah. texted me. Yeah. Yeah, you were. I got stuck in the elevator that day. That's right. <laughs> I got stuck in the elevator that day. Wow. I don't know how he got out, to be honest with you. Thank God he did. Well, we have I done. wasn't fitting through that what hole in the ceiling. Without I wasn't fitting summer. through the hole in the ceiling, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't happening. He said it, not me. <laughs> We're using those fingers of yours to get through there. <laughs> <laughs> Race number five, going a mile and an eighth. Um, I want to show the Candy Tycoon hunt the front race because hunt the front you know get just misses second sort of making the big run at the back of the pack what i want to talk about more about is candy candy tycoon i'm, I'm not saying he can't win todd's putting the blinkers on feels like he's frustrated too with this horse the thing about candy tycoon is if you look at his record he actually looks pretty good he's been second in the in the, in the fountain of youth he got second in that race to rushy who won the mm -hmm. pat day mile in none of the races he's ever run in, did he do any running? He talked about this the last time. Getting perfect trips and like that race, he didn't do any running at all and just sort of fell into second. A good ride by John Velasquez, saving ground doing that. I know he's got Luis Saez on him today. Who's, I mean, he's the magic man of this meet. It's amazing how worse are running for him. I, he can win this race. I picked him second, but he gets bet and he just isn't very good. Sort of started his career with a pair of blinkers. And they took him off right away. Well, he's a morning glory. Obviously, this horse was highly touted. Highly last year. touted. And he's, yeah, yeah, just been a, a Eight real. Eight to five, three to five. Uh, real four money to five, burner. three to five. So yeah. also one to five. One to five. Got beat at one. That's right. That, that, old, that Tiz Rye time came and got him. Wow. Yeah. And then he wins next time out. And uh, all the people that bet him at, at prohibitive favoritism probably jumped <laughs> off at how's, 880. How's the Yankee the division going to win this race? Your I'm, horse. I'm, I'm just hoping he. See you later. Yeah. So you haven't learned. I know that's your first talking horse in Saratoga, mm -hmm. but you know those outside posts at Saratoga mile and eighth, it's tough to clear, right? You do know that, right? I do. But I, does he have a lot to clear in here? He's got to maybe clear this horse. I don't think Irad's going to be too patient with per capita. We'll talk about him. What about Heirloom Kitten? Even Eric Cancel's got an Heirloom Kitten aggressively the lead inside of him. You think Eric's going to abandon those tactics that have worked? Well, the race two back I mean, in the I mean, seven slot. is technically faster, but... Yeah. but and Jose knows that, and Jose is going to give this horse the best chance to win by just going for it. Here's Per Capita, who broke the maiden at Gulfstream, got disqualified, went to Churchill, and won right back. You don't see that too often. Um, I got to tell you something, though. This race came back with a big figure. I'm not too impressed with this race. This race, that figure does not hold up. No scrutiny. shot, right? We, we have the scratch. I'm going to read <clears throat> scratches to people so they can at least do that. So you know, hang on. Hang on. Race number one, the four is scratched. 
Race number two, I think Bill DeSouda scratched. Number two? Yes. <clears throat> Bill DeSouda scratched out of race number two. Okay. So Fort Worth becomes an overwhelming favorite. Uh, race number three, the three threat level midnight is scratched from Jonathan Thomas. There are no scratches in the fourth and fifth. Race number six, the two and three are scratched in race number six. You knew when Winwood Pride was coming out. It was ran the other day. And the three Chateau, which does change that race quite a bit, his speed coming out. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Race number eight, the three, Rose's Vision, who was going to be a long shot in the lure, came out. Go to race number 10. The Binkster, or Binkster is out for our man Ray Handel. Another scratch that will change that race. Race number 11, uh, the 11, the MTO, no Lyme. Uh, no longer Leine Seidler. Race number 12, the plain one, Ever Dangerous, appears to be out, as well as the number 10 horse, who's an MTO, Spiteful Kitten. No scratch in the 13th. The hopeful, the run, run happy hopeful. Race number 14, the one Uncle Ned is out. Um, the four, John Want Revenge, won't be getting it. The six, Parson, is also out. And the 12 and 14, Gunman means Seize the Hay, gets in. So one, one, four, six, 12, 14 in race number 14. Johnny and I will go over those after the card. Let's go to this race. Let's finish. I agree with you on per capita. I don't, that, that figure does not hold up scrutiny. I also wonder if he's really going to be more effective going a mile and an eighth. Obviously, he's not impossible. He's a player to his friend. And I think there's going to be enough speed or air on the front today. Because there really wasn't much speed last time out. Okay. Bigger Beast Life won that race. I think Hunt the Front's going to get it done today. He's going to get that win for our man Nick Zito on closing day. Okay. I, I really like Hunt the Front. I think he's a nice horse, Hunt the Front. I think today he's going to pick him up. And I know you're rooting for it. Of course. Even though you picked him fourth. I'll use him. I'll definitely use him How because can not? he might, it, like you said, if, if any one of Heirloom Kitten or Per Capita try and go with uh, Yankee Division or vice versa. There could be some pace on it. So race number six, Chateau is out, so we don't need to see that replay. Steve, thank you. Um, so how does this change the race? Well, Shamrock obviously has speed. Topper uh, T showed a lot of speed last night. Yeah, but he's probably but he's not going to show it again. To, I uh, hope not. I picked him. You like him or Clinch? The pace scenario is obviously significantly different in this race, and it's going to hurt my top choice, Life in Shambles, who I was hoping was going to take advantage of a very strong pace. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to hope that gets decent pace. Rob Atras's horses off of claims have been running extremely well, particularly this meet. Got the job done with Battle Station yesterday. Yes, so cost me a fortune. Time. That was terrible. Cost me a fortune. That, I made I mean, my biggest bet of the meet on... Uh, yeah, that uh, your boy uh, Pulse 8. Yeah. Pulse 8. And Louis gave that was a, a great good ride. ride by Kendrick. Saved all the ground. Mm -hmm. Yep, tipped. Got the money. It was a good ride. So I'm going to hope off the claim for Rob Atras is enough pace, but without Chateau in here, the pace scenario... Well, you, is, got, you got Shamrock, you got Aristocratic. No, no, you, you got some yeah, oh, Aristocratic on the outside as well. Yeah, you got plenty of pace Obviously here, helps so, the chance of Aristocratic in here as well off the yeah. claim for Michelle Nevin. Yeah. And Aristocratic's probably the horse that helps the most. Yeah. And the horse you'd want to use in your multi-race wages. I don't know I, I don't know if I trust him to win this, but he's certainly a horse that you would want to include. He don't, you don't want to let him beat you. I don't know if you want to play him to win on your Naira Bets account at 3-1, to one, but I'd certainly want to use him in your But in Louis Saez is not going to let him get away with no, number four Shamrock. Right. You know, Louis has not won all these races by being unaggressive. Right. So Topper T, talk about Topper T. Yeah, Topper T on the lead last time. I, there's enough speed in here for him today to not be on the lead. He cuts back to six. Um, um, I, I just thought he would get, like Life in Shambles, he'd get a little pace to run at today, go back to his uh, usual running style of making a one run and trying to get there. And I wanted to use the two of them mostly. In here. I, I agree with you on Topper T. I agree totally. I hate entries. People are going to bet Clench. Do. I don't like Clench at all. I don't either. I don't yeah. like Clench. And I just, the fact that he's in there, instead of getting the 8 to 10 to 1, you would have gotten on Topper T. You're going to get 4 to 1. Kind of like yesterday, right, with the Jorge Abreu, Klarovich horse. You probably would have got four or five to one on him without uh, the, the Chad horse. Correct. He wins and you get three to Race five. number seven as we move along. We'll take a look at the one turf horse that's run reasonably well, and that's the number six, Mrs. Frankel. I, I have a hard time believing that there aren't better horses in here and the race is Simply Ravishing. Now, Simply Ravishing might turn out to be one of the best two-year-old fillies in the country based on her win in the off-the-turf P.D. Johnson, but not in the turf. And I just didn't think this was a very good race. By the way, big figure, I think of an 81 or 82 figure for that one in the spinaway. That was something for That was something. That was ran, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I... I'm just not a big fan of this horse. It's a slow race. I mean... Is it me or the Frankels come to America? There, there's only that one decent one for Chad. Or Ruba Linda? 
yeah, in general, the, the, the Frankels have, have not been that good. Uh, I took free of the press. I know there's two Chad Browns in here. There's no rabbits allowed in the uh, stud barn, Andy. What's that? There's no rabbits allowed in the stud barn. He never left the he never left the yard without bullet train as his rabbit. Yeah, but he also uh, never left the racetrack without winning. Much true too. Um, I hear Julie Bird might be maybe Julie Bird's the better one of the two. Maybe it could have gone eight five. I put Chad's horses one two, figuring one of them would run. I don't know. I have seen two Emsha wishes run. Misha wish. Well, they think they're they, I think they're called, they're uh, really? marketing as Emsha wish. Yeah. Um, and they've both run well. One one, and another one ran second or third in the Midwest. I can't recall. I don't know. Took a shot. Took a little shot with this one. And is it M? Sh- M? It's M. Shawish. That's what I was told. Okay. But I couldn't Wasn't he taken it. down in a very lame DQ here on closing day for Todd? I believe he was in a turf race. It was a terrible take. He was also one. Of, he's also one of the only horses from America to ever go over to Dubai and actually run. On the turf. I think he ran third in one of those $6 really? million. He won, the, he won the week running of the dawn the year yeah. I was down there in the 2016. Only, I, I, we always send the turf horses over there. They don't run two steps. He's the only horse that I think ever hit the board in one of those turf races. All right. Um, what else do we got in here quickly? We've got um, um, the, the horse in the rail. Um, no to, ordinary time is after current. Yep. Not a lot of turf. Otherwise, actually, the pedigree horse in this race is the two, is the two love struck, who's a half to not only scat daddy, but antipathy as well. But they're more, I mean, scat daddy's been an effective turf sire, but it's more of a dirt family. And I thought it was a negative that, that, that Mel Mott was running this horse on, the, again, on the turf. You know, you start to look at this. She's now a 21-year-old mare. There was a lot of gaps. I think there's only five foals or six foals. Yeah. So. That always scares but, I mean, me. Good, as well. I mean, look, when two of them are multiple, uh, multiple grade Scott one Daddy. winners, I guess you're a pretty good brood man. Kenny was a very nice racehorse, but he was a better sire. Yep, he's a big loss when he when he died. He was a he was a real he was I mean, yeah. incredible winning here, winning that in Europe. That was when that was right when Justify was going for the triple crown. Race number eight is the lure at a mile and a sixteenth. Um, you know, we'll get to to Largent. I Eventually, so, yeah. we'll get to him. The third horse. Breaking the rules will show him beating Devamani. I know that Largent has a pace advantage, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Breaking the rules is going to be close to him. I just think he's good, breaking the rules. Now, you and I have talked about this off air a few times. Um, We have. We actually hate each other. We never talk off air. That's true. Uh, Not over my ties last night because they don't flame anymore. But um, I I don't drink my ties. I know you don't. Uh, I do. Largent... Was a horse for is, is a horse for Todd Fletcher that I was really looking forward to this year, um, and uh, you know it, it appears now that it's just it's hard to keep him on a racetrack because you see him disappearing. Uh, May, We're going to talk May about January in a bit. Okay, as I said three um, times. This horse has come back from the break, breaking the rules, and he has just been flat out good. Did you need a grade age, one winner two back? Yeah, yep, yes he did. So. I mean, he's come back, and this is, I, I talked to Sugar about this horse on radio uh, about a month back, uh, what he was going to do next, and uh, appropriate. it would be pretty appropriate if Sugar won the lore. Um, I wonder if he's ever won the lore. I don't think he has, because I think that's why I, I think that's cool. we're talking about it. Um, I mean, this horse has just been really, really, he went, to the, he went to the sidelines with an issue. He's come back. He went to the sidelines with the looks of a good horse. He's come back better than ever. I mean, he's mm-hmm. really, really nice. And Shug, as is his uh, want, bringing him along kind of slowly. And you would imagine after doing? this, I mean, maybe a race like the Shadwells in mind. I don't know. I mean, does he stick around and run in this race, the Knickerbocker? We'll look yeah. at last year's Knickerbocker when Olympico ran a good second um, to LeCohen. And he's not a horse that just needs a soft turf, but he is a horse that's going to be pace compromised in here. Um, an interesting subplot to this, Michael Dubb, the part owner, saying this the other day, uh, Michael's third right now. Mike Rapoli is three behind Carvage Stable and technically still in the running, as is Michael Dubb. But if he doesn't finish at least second this year, Mike Dubb, I think it'll be the first year in well over a decade. I was hoping that Mike would actually text me and, and, and give me the exact number, but I know that it's been at least That's 10 years that Mike Dubb has been one and two. I, I don't think – I know people say, oh, Mike Dubb runs a lot of horses. Okay, but – Finishing first or second in the owner's title for more than a decade in Saratoga, where a lot of people come up here and try to win. You think of some of the years Ken Ramsey had up here, Mike Rapoli as well, and obviously Karovich is positioned to win their third straight titles. You know, it's not easy, and Mike Dubb is always in the hunt, and he's still in the hunt right now, but we'll see. Records are made to be broken, yep. but uh, still, that's an impressive performance, and we'll see how that plays it's out. It's a pair of blinkers today, too, for the I first think he's going to run okay, this horse. 
I, I actually do. The problem with the race is Largent. Um, we'll take a look at Largent winning. This is down at Gulfstream. I mean, he won about as fake a race last time as has ever existed, a four-horse field. Be the three-year-old. Um, what's that? He beat a three-year-old. Right. And it just right, wasn't. Bolden came back and ran here on the... Uh... <laughs> In he beat Sarnak. Temple, he beat Tribuven, who beat Bala Rocks the last time they met, a Chad Brown horse. In fact, you'll see him coming in the picture right now, the number 12, that's Tribuven. Um, he's going to be the controlling speed with Luis Saez. I feel like I've seen this movie before. And it's called Halliday. <laughs> it's not just Halliday. I'm I mean, just it was, the two, it was how, how, how about the two the horses, the horse that won uh, Rinaldi? How about Luis Saez just goes, he well, goes, and they grab. I don't Louis and Todd together. That's why I said Halliday. Yeah. Oh, I see. But I, I mean, yeah. Um, and, he goes, and, and they grab. And the problem is, the, pro the, the, the problem is, on paper, the other three, save breaking the rules, I mean, and even breaking the rules to an extent, they're just not quick enough to stay within earshot of this horse early, unless they are aggressively written. I mean, Bala Rocks used to be... A little quicker than he is now, but I mean, is he going to be able? This horse is, you know, no, he's pretty loose. fast. He's loose. I just don't think he's good enough. I know we've seen horses that aren't good enough to win, and this race is on the melon, not on the inner. We'll I see. I, I feel like I gotta, you got to use him, but yeah, I just I feel like breaking the rules is talented enough to overcome the the, the pace advantage. I, I do not disagree. That's the first eight. The mandatory payout in the Empire Six when we return from a quick break from our wonderful sponsor at Saratoga Water. For almost 150 years, the Saratoga name has been synonymous with the finest quality, sustainably sourced spring water available anywhere. Saratoga carries on the rich tradition of its forefathers by crafting each stunning blue glass bottle with the same attention to detail and care that has been its hallmark for generations. Visit saratogaspringwater.com today or ask for us by name at your local market or restaurant. Saratoga Spring Water. Make every day exquisite. Welcome back to the final Talking Horses of the Saratoga Meet. He's Anthony Stabile. I'm Andy Serling. The mandatory payout in the Empire Six, 588,000 and change. 58? What is it? 500 and what? Well, it was 558. 558? I could be wrong. I was wrong yesterday, but like 777. Yeah. Giving it away, races 9 through 14. Not an easy sequence. I'll be putting up a losing ticket on Saratoga <laughs> Live later today. I Such an optimist, Andy. Well, Such an optimist. I, I tell you what, Anthony. If this were a regular pick six, I'd say $5,000. So that's $500 at 20 cents a ticket. I'm happy to bet you as many lunches as you want that you can't hit this thing for $500 today. It's funny. I have a four hundred and sixty dollars ticket. Yeah, okay. and you're right. And and I I'm putting it in because I believe the pool's going to be big. And yeah, yeah, no, uh, I get it. I I I. It's, it's I don't disagree. It's a very 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 difficult sequence. Now, one thing that may help in race number nine is that apparently, the number three Speaker's Corner is the second coming of Hindu. Speaker's Corner, who's eight to five morning line, uh, the Bill Mott, nice looking Bill Mott, first or that won was that yesterday or two days ago. So it was early yesterday. It was early yesterday, that inside horse, the Godolphin horse. Jane something Jane. Apparently this horse outworked that horse by about 50 lengths. Oh. Like 15 lengths or something. Uh, from the gate. That 40. That, I did not know any of this. Yeah. That hor this horse buried that horse out of the gate. This horse is going to be an overwhelming favorite. You've got on top. I've yeah. put second. When I see the Bill Mott horses work that fast. Oh, Bill's, when you see any Bill Mott horses, oh, you start hold drooling on, hold on. and Bill's salivating. Bill's MO is not to work horses these fast. When they're working this fast, they're doing it on their own. Uh, unlike, unlike some other trainers. But when you see horses, well, guys like Joe Mott, Christophe Lamont, Chad Brown, when they're working this fast, they're doing it on their own. No, I, I, you're not wrong. So I, 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 I see that, and yes, I'm going. And I do love, my, I do love picking my Bill Mott horses. You so do. You I went do. right to this horse. Um, 
Bill's had a lot of seconds to meet, but he's also had some winners recently. He's had a good meet. He's at 12, I believe. I, I can't resist horses with experience that I think are interesting. And Team Merchants took money first time out. Had comes, a dip on this horse first time that's out. That's right. Nyquist. This horse comes out of that very good reinvestment risk. We saw Olympic Olympiada finish third, have a nice win for Bill Mott, and we're an 80-plus buyer the other day. Outlier may have been the one they were betting in that entry. I don't know. And it seemed like the eight outlier was at a real kickback issue last time mm -hmm. out. I'm not big on that, but he was throwing his head up a little bit. But Team Merchants actually ran okay in there. Um, he was four wide. He made a real run around the turn. And I think Team Merchants might be okay now. In all likelihood, we're looking at a race may have a good firster. And, you know, also you've got Savoy in here also, who may be a runner as well. I heard Demon could run a little bit as well than him before. Demon. Todd Fletcher. There you go. It's closing day. You've got uh, you've got an into mischief. It's okay turf and dirt, nothing special mm -hmm. on the dam side in that horse. Speaker's Corner, Demon. I think a lot of people are going to have to lean on the number three, Speaker's Corner. I'm going to use three and six to try to just keep it small for the ticket I put up. We'll see. Anything else? I just went to the first. Yes, you did. Race number 10. So number 10, Binkster coming out changes it a lot. And I'll tell you the words it's going to help. It's going to help Maximiliano. Right? It should. Because we've got to deal with ink splots towards the front end. But I thought Maximiliano was very interesting, a horse that I have third and might have put second. You've got the nine, the big S on top. I do. For my arch nemesis, Ray Handel. This is a horse. He scratched that, the favorite by running this one. This is the horse. This is the horse Ray has been very high on. Uh, since early on, if you go through his career, runs into Nitrous first time out a couple of summers ago, breaks his maiden first time, uh, second time out, first time back at Tampa, and then catches a muddy track. He, he runs him the wolf. He runs worse. him in the stakes. He runs him in the Amsterdam. He runs him in the Jerkins. He puts him on the turf, and he runs in the slop. In all honesty, this horse is getting back to a fast track for the first time in a race he can win. I know they've been high on this horse. They get Joel Rosario back. The blinkers go back on. He's drawn outside in here. I'm all, I'm all about the big, the big Stabile, the big S. I'm, I can't argue with any of that. I think you're right. I also think I, I, I can't argue with it. I mentioned Maximiliano. He's the kind of horse for Wesley Ward I like to use in these races. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Jose Ortiz is on him. Um, Irads and I'm a pharaoh. We'll see how the battle goes. Tied. 39 days in the meet. They are tied at 57, both those I guys. I called every fantastic. bookmaker I could last night. Nobody would give me the line on uh, you picking Tickvin Flu today. I couldn't bet it. Well, it was barred from wager. How can I not pick Tickvin Flu? I knew Tick And he has Tick a big chance. Tickvin Flu is a horse. I'm going to say, if there was an Eclipse Award for the most mishandled <laughs> horse in racing, this <clears> is not, a There'd horse. be quite a few of them on that ballot, but he might be the winner. He wins his first race going seven furlongs with a 79 buyer. Then... Manny took him off the gold rail and went wide, and he finished third to Heichel, who came back and won the Gotham in his next start. Okay, I understand having delusions of grandeur and wanting to head into Triple Crown race. They ran him at routes. What about his races in his career suggested that he's a better horse going long on the dirt? They tried the turf. They basically tried every single thing you could except running him in the kind of races he wants to be in, shorter one-turn races. And the one time he ran a mile one-turn at Ch Churchill, he got a sloppy track that he couldn't handle. If I didn't know better, Jeff Bloom... Was who, torturing me? Who, yes. <laughs> exactly Actually, right. Actually, from what I understand, because he had a part owner that I'm friendly with, said they wanted to run him shorter. But he was not entered in shorter races. No. Now he is off the claim for a guy whose horses are running off the claim. Yep. I know it's a tough spot. I'll give you another horse I think is a little interesting to price, Cucina. Has it occurred to you that maybe Bill Mott was running Cucina on the wrong surface all this time? Um, this horse ran a 75 buyer, sloppy track or not, in a second career start in the dirt. Last time out in the Yalpon race in Blinkster, I mean, he didn't run that badly in finishing fourth. Got an 85 buyer. Maybe he just should have been on the Maybe. dirt all. And this is one of the problems with running as many turf races as we do. People are turning dirt horses into turf because horses. Because there's more opportunities. Because there's more opportunities. In reality, they should be running on the dirt. I don't disagree with that. I thought he was a little interesting. Okay. I'm going to use I'm going to use two, three, five, and nine in here. You're just trying to get on Bill's good side, I think. By saying he's been running on the horse on the wrong surface. <laughs> Listen, you did the right thing today, Bill, and put him on the dirt. So Andy's going to give you a little love with Cucina. Very, uh, very self-serving. No, I'm pointing out he did the wrong thing for way too long. But I'll blame Mark Cassie for that because he he started <laughs> it and Bill just was finishing it. Race number eleven seems like a tricky race. Um, what did you do? And we got. I went to Orlando Nota. You got to be kidding me. No. This race has you no see this horse run last time. 
yeah, he, he walked in the front end and won for a trainer who's had incredible meat. I mean, I don't know how he's going to possibly win here. How's he going to win here? Really? Well, you like this horse? Yeah. He's seven to two morning line? Yeah. I like the book about 200 million on him. Wow. So you could do it too. You I know it's Orlando. I know you Nota, have a backer. And these Nota horses, they, they never seem to lose. But how this horse could possibly win this race, I have no idea. Well, I think it's a combination of riding the hot barn. And let's be honest here. He let's caught, be honest. He caught kind of. This is not the hardest starter he's ever yeah, going to face. I'm going to disagree with you. This is a very really? interesting race. Yeah, I don't like the source at all. But if he wins, I, 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 mean, hey, I, I thought I, he was 15 know. to 1 morning line. I was going to give the old, I can't knock your pick. He's 15 to 1. But it, if David's right and he's the favorite in here, I didn't know he might the line, be the worst favorite in the history of horse racing. I, just, I, just, I know it's the notas. And as I've said, you know, you want to get in the way of a freight train, you know, do what I'm doing and say no to can't win because they just seem to win. And so maybe he'll win. But he's probably I, he's I not fast he enough to be in front, but I mean, you got to figure enough. he's going to get a good trip. No, I don't. I don't, I don't I mean, think he'll probably be laying third or fourth in here. Listen, like I said, the Noto horses run better than their PPs sometimes. I don't see their PPs. But his, hold on. But Andy, his last race puts him right there. It's a totally phonied up race because of ridiculously slow pace and a mile and three eighths. Mile and three eighths are totally different than these races. I, I, we just disagree. Yeah. We could argue about it for the rest of the time. I mean, you've even got the Wesley War horse second, who I don't particularly like either. We've had him fourth. I, I like the outside horses, the eight and ten in here. We'll take a look at Ali Oop Johnny. I mean, is it possible? Well, Ali Johnny survived a pace that basically fell apart. The other speed finished 11th in there. Um, I just think he was running against better horses in Mandate and Road to Meath. I mean, I thought this horse ran extremely well first time for Bruce Brown last time, and he's going to be forward with Dylan. Dylan's just supposed to go to the lead on him. I like him and Scano. I figure Scano will be forward Luis Saez. Tommy Albert Ryan's been winning with horses off of maiden wins in the turf. I want Ali Oop Johnny and Scano. If anybody else wins, I lose. Okay. We just saw this race completely differently. Yeah, we did. I thought Wild Bankers, you know, you know was a little interesting too uh, with Mike Dean. I thought he ran okay last time out, but I don't know if he's good enough to win here, but it doesn't hurt to get Joel. Yeah, never hurts to get Joel. Yeah, I, I, I see this race completely differently than you. And if Mystery Bank wins... It'll be the cherry on top of my meat. <laughs> Race number 12, the one ever dangerous is out. Race number 12, let's look at Lonesome Fugitive. Finishing second to Don Juan Kitten, who took a brutal beat in the uh, Saranac. I think he's way the horse to beat, don't you? Yeah. You pick him on top? I did. And he will be the single in my Empire Six ticket. Hmm. Yep. I am not singling him. I'm using both Chad Brown runners okay. in this race. Okay. But I don't disagree. He's a potential single. I had I, I, I felt like to keep the t I mean, I'm certainly not going to invest you, 920. So. Do you worry his running style is going to be compromised by the surface? A little bit. I like the blinkers coming on to maybe get him a little quicker. Um, He's not going to be quick enough to be close. And do you worry that proven strategies with Luis Saez is going to do what he needs to do to win races, which is go to the front in here? Y yeah, I am. I'm not um, Louis proven strategies' biggest fan. But he's got fast races, and he is going to be in front. And if I use three, I'll use him. I'm worried about him wiring the field. I'm just telling you. Okay. Uh, I, I, the horse how are you I, not the, worried the about horse, an inter-turf race with Luis Saez I, I, that's I'm, got speed going to the lead and wiring a field? How are you not worried about that? I'll tell you the horse that I almost put second here that I'm that I I, I think uh, Miaminoy is very interesting. Who? In here. Uh, Miaminoy, one A. I am annoyed. My am annoyed. I am annoyed. Okay. Yeah, no, that horse is not impossible. for Gargan? Right. Debuted against Structor four months back, wins at Aqueduct, goes down, gets beat less than a length of field pass. Then they try him in the Jeff Ruby Stakes on the all-weather at, at Turfway. Mm -hmm. Back to the surface he belongs on. I think he's very... It, it, it did be just in time for wine when he broke his maiden. I do want to point know, that out. No, but listen, no, no, his, I, I know. You know, his race in, in the Danny Beach was okay. He broke a length slow that day and took him back. He was inside, but he was three to four wide in the second turn. I don't disagree. No, I... I he's I, the interesting one. I almost put him second. He's, he's not impossible. I think he was my, my infamous fifth pick. Mm -hmm. I, I do not disagree with you at all. Let's talk about success, succeed and surpass for a moment here. Um, oh, we, we've done a good job. We have some time here. Mm -hmm. Um... <clears throat> Blinkers come off after this. Uh, was this the last effort? I worry so. that, in general, you saw that uh, Pixel 8 went out to California, won the Del Mar Derby. Um, I did not take the $5 on him. 
um, even after Jay Pribman agreed with me that he was the horse to beat in there. Um, I just checked to make sure he was my, my, he's my source in California. Um, one smart, thing I'll say about man. this, he has very good numbers and transfers. A lot of them are Europeans. By the way, that picture, Graham, I think he just got out of prep school. I think that's his graduation day photo from prep school. Yeah, we, 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 well, <laughs> they get Chelsea on this case. Yeah, we really do. Get really time. have to. Yeah, um, right. yeah, this horse is a little interesting. A couple of, couple of races against Moforza last year. Um, horse is a nice horse. He yeah. ran second to Moforza in the Twilight Derby. This horse is okay. Yeah. I wouldn't be dismissive of this horse. I, I think he's dangerous in here. Um, you and I have talked about Lonesome Fugitive in the past. Though. I think Lonesome Fugitive is the horse that can come up with a little bit of a breakthrough performance in here and kind of get on the on the stakes track. I I, I think we're both. I'm, I know I'm a big I, fan I, of this I, horse. I, I like Basquiat because Basquiat's going to be a big price in here because they're going to bet on Lonesome Fugitive, who's the worst to beat. No argument. But I think that Basquiat's very dangerous in here. Okay. Basquiat has talent. And I also think there's an argument that Basquiat spent a lot of time on a dead rail last time. So I think his last race is not nearly as bad as it looks. And his other two races are just fine. He's not half the durable goods, who was a, a, a turf winner. Uh, Klarovich had an American pharaoh. He was good enough on the dirt that they wanted to give him a shot. I think he's now going to be running on the surface he was supposed to okay. be on from day one. And I think he's going to be kind of a forgotten horse in here. And I'll tell you something else about him. He can be forward. He's well, got I was the speed say to be close, to so I think Joel would be, and, and Chad would be very wise. I don't think they're going to be in front of proven strategies, but I think this horse could be right behind them. I was going to mention that. If this horse can, if this horse takes to the turf, I would think he would be forwardly placed. Yeah, I think they should out. go to the lead, and if the other horse really wants it, yep. make him work for it. But the only other horse with speed here is the great Dansky, and we'll see what he does in the turf. But... I see Basquiat as forward in this race. The great and I think dance that's going to serve him well. The great dance, the great dance game, Basquiat, are kind of in the same boat here, right? If they can turf, but but maybe, but, but one of them has a big turf pedigree, right? No, I understand. I understand what I'm saying. And one of them is a much better horse, right? But the other one I'm not, is a little I'm not, faster. I'm not, I'm not, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I think Basquiat's going to get missed on the board, and I, I haven't given up because I think he's a very talented dirt horse, okay. that, a very talented horse that may have been running on the wrong surface. The only thing I'll say about him on a knock, which and, and I think if, you know, if, if, if Lonesome Fugitive uh, doesn't have the breakthrough, I think three or four horses go in the race, um, I don't know how far he wants to go. I, but we'll see, what it, we'll see what happens on the turf. A mile race, Anthony. They're not I don't going know how six far. Miles. I don't know how far he wants to go. Well, I don't know. He wanted seven furlongs of the dirt in his first start. I don't know how far he wants Anthony, to go. Anthony, you know what you would, would help you as a handicapper to stop asking yourself questions that are irrelevant. He definitely doesn't want to go a mile. Distance and a half. isn't irrelevant. He definitely does not look like a mile and a okay. half horse. But 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 Got what it. about him suggests that the distance is a problem? I don't know. He kind of levels out at the end of his race. I know you said he was on a dead rail last time, but he just kind of he was on like a dead rail last time, and also maybe on the wrong surface. Okay, he, that's what I'm saying. I, I I would have he finished. Behind Mystic Guide and Country Grammar, who won won stake races and subsequent that. starts. Yeah, he was chasing. I get the whole thing. I'm just yeah, saying, and he I'm was just... chasing. Tap it to win. Uh, whatever. A mile on the turf is too far. I'm going to tell you right now, he's not going to lose this race because a mile on the turf was too far. Okay. For him. He might lose this race for 800 different reasons. Okay. But after the race, going gee, if, it, if it was seven and a half, they could run those seven and a halfs in foot. That's my favorite thing, by the way. That at Gulfstream, they run mile and seven and a half furlong turf races, and with the run up, they're basically exactly the same distance, and people think they're different distances. Can we talk about the run happy hopeful, please? You don't want to get me on that tangent of the seven and a half and mile races at no, Gulfstream? No, I want to stop it before, <laughs> before I go out of my before mind. Before they pull a plug on us. My, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the run we got to get through two more the races. The run happy man. hopeful. We're almost home. It's a terrific closing feature, the last grade one of our meet. Jackie's Warrior is good. We'll take a look at Jackie's Warriors winning the Sarah Special. This horse just absolutely ran this field off their feet. Are you worried at all the ride of a lifetime? I know he was stretching out to a mile, but he was very disappointing in the Iroquois over the weekend. Yeah, oh, I didn't pick this horse today. I, I didn't ask if you picked but him or not. I, I, Are yeah, you concerned? Yes, you could pick I him am. eighth. And you could... I am. Of course I'm concerned. Um... Because the ride of a lifetime, really, I don't think it would have mattered if it was six, seven, a mile. He just wasn't good on Saturday. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that Jackie's Warrior is not good. Correct. But that concerns me, you know, because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's worth discussing going forward. Yeah, no question This horse is good. I'm not going to deny it. And he's going to come flying out. But he's got to get seven. And he's going to face a rival that isn't quite the rival he faced last time. No. 
No, he's going to face a, a, a serious, serious racehorse. I mean, if you want to look back at the two-year-old efforts of the meet, um, I, I don't know how you look past this. Yeah, I agree. We'll take a look at Reinvestments Raiden win, and he was he was tremendous in there. He really yeah. was. And we've seen Olympiad, who finished third, come back and win. Um, <clears throat> I think another did another horse out of that race run well? I can't remember. Maybe not. This was some performance. Yes. This is a serious horse. Now, listen, he's running against Jackie's Warrior, is more experienced and has a stakes win, but I, I, I think the sky's the limit with this horse. Doing everything right here. Just doing everything right. I, big eye test horse for me. Ooh, the eye big test. One. I haven't broken out a lot this meet. This horse was, we texted him. You know, as he was fast, was too. He's a good horse. This yeah. is a good horse. This is a real matchup. Yeah. These two horses. Um, the, the serious horse. What do you do with Moot? What, how do you pronounce it? Muta Sabek? Muta Sabek. Muta Sa no, I will Muta Sabek. ask the same question I asked about Jaggy's Warrior. This horse beat a filly in this race. Who didn't run two who steps didn't run yesterday. a step in the spinaway. Nope. <laughs> that has to concern you a little bit, right? Had a great setup yesterday, too. Kind of moved out at the 3 8 pole, looked like she was in a fire, and she went the wrong way. Um, yeah, it absolutely concerns me. Absolutely concerns me. To the point where, after her performance yesterday, I almost flipped them around and put Jackie's Warrior second. You know what, though? Source was tactical enough last time where if Jackie's Warrior starts to come back, going to be moving with reinvestment risk. Reinvestment is going to be in front of this source. I, I would assume he is. I would assume he's going to be. Um, I, it was, you know, I know... And we, I say this a lot when it comes to the two-year-olds. I don't think you worry as much now about who they're beating as opposed to how they're doing it. Um, especially... I like how fast they're going. I'm big on how fast they're going. Especially now because, you know, it's a little harder to discern class with the two-year-olds. We don't have allowance races anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's made in races, right to stakes races uh, for the most part um, this time of year. So... I have a question about he Jackie's, just did it the right way. Jackie's Warrior. Yeah. Would he be the first grade one winner from McLean's Music? Not trained not, by Chad Brown? Not owned by Clarvis Stable or, by or trained, by, Stable? trained by Chad Brown? Yeah. Complexity, complexity in cloud, cloud, computing. cloud computing. And also the only one that doesn't have his name start with a C. So that could disqualify him completely. I, I lost a trivia question. I, I, I lost a... I, I, I swung a miss on this the other night. I didn't, I didn't remember that Steve trained McLean's music. Did you know that? Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, he won in California for Steve. Yeah, I forgot so that. So he had a 114 buyer in his debut. That, and I, I remember again. it was 114 buyer, and I remember it was California. I think that's why it kind of... And he's uh, Forest Music. Yeah. Kind of caught my... It was like in... Uh, it just didn't make sense to say Steve because of California. Remember his dam, Forest Music? She debuted at Laurel for Michael Gill. Um, and I think Mark Schumann. Wow. She won by like 17 lengths or something and ran a giant buyer figure at six furlongs. Giant number. And they brought her out in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in California 16 or 17 days later and ran her against half bridle. She was only six to one. I, the half bridle. She made the lead. Now. She finished last. Yep. But she did win the Honorable Miss, first time for Steve Asmussen, in Stone Street. Anyhow, Stone Street, of course, owned McLean's music at that time. Race number 14. Race number 14. This the is final it. final race of the Saratoga meeting. Um, is it star... How do you pronounce this again? I have no idea. Stardesis? You're asking me how they pronounce the... Well, you're the track announcer name? here. On the set. Track you're the track announcer upstairs. right yes. here, right now. Um, I do not know how to say this horse. Now. I, I got to tell you one thing about this horse. This horse I should is figure slow. that out. This horse is slow. <laughs> this, horse, yeah, this horse hasn't been very good. I don't disagree with that. This horse is slow. I don't disagree with Jorge that. Jorge Abreu has had a sensational meet. Yeah, you're just hoping the run for Jorge continues. He's dropping in for a tag for the first time. Let me ask you a question. How many of the wins that Jorge Abreu has are horses that were in Chad Brown's barn that he gave to him? I know two for My Heart Belongs to Daddy and the one yesterday, Price Talk. All Chad Brown I horses. I think there's one more. Chad has done a really been very helpful to Jorge, who was a tremendous assistant to him. And uh, well, listen, when Chad Brown wins races and when Chad Brown wins Eclipse Awards, you hear him talk about the team. Right. It's very, very important to him. And Jorge was a member of the team for a long time. And you want to help the people that have helped you 
get the get I remember when he left, Chad you said get. to me, basically, I begged him to stay. <laughs> I gave him all the reasons he doesn't want to leave. They have a great relationship. Yep. So it's good to see people yeah. in this game have the relationship no question that about they it. have. No question about it. Um, listen, I've got this for a second. You know, I, I get no it. No loyalty. You just have no loyalty. I, I, I get it. <laughs> Remember who picked this one. Remember who picked this one. There was a recent one. conversation about your loyalty, and the question was what was done to get it, and I said winning a lot of races. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Vicarage, the three, is another horse. You've got second. I took the two drop downs. Four, you know, that's funny about this horse. This horse was seven to five. You couldn't wait, guys? This horse was seven to five in his, turf, in his debut on the turf. He doesn't really have a turf pedigree. No. The Medagliandoro and a Malibu Moon Dam. There was tw second twice in the turf. It did handle it and run fairly well, but she produced two foals um, that, that didn't win the turf. I don't know. They're going back to the turf. Maybe she'll do well. There isn't that much. I mean, Bold Gem, who I scratched into fourth, is probably the horse to beat in here, but you really trust this horse uh, to win in the start number 13? No. Always would lie. I would love to see my friend Leah run out of here with a win. Leah Giamatti. What about but Seize the Hay? On the outside, Barring getting in, in the yeah, 13. that draws in. As Andy told you to scratch, gave you the scratches earlier. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, though, Andy, he dropped in for a tag last time. He had the rail he was on the terrible. turf. He was awful. He was terrible. He was bad. But in this field, he belongs. But he's got an outside post, and you're right. He had a perfect trip last time, and literally did zero running. You imagine if it's tied going into the end, and Arad, <clears throat> Arad goes from riding John Want Revenge to seize the hay. <laughs> I thought maybe he was saying that Chad Brown would win five races and somehow he would, they would be tied and Todd wouldn't and Jorge Abreu would win with a horse that was in Chad Brown's barn before. That would be unbelievable. Or one behind. Um, I picked Mo Majestic because I went through just what we went through and said, no, no, no. And I thought, is there a stranger in here? And there is a stranger. Sure. And it's Majestic. For what it's worth, year plus layoffs and turf routes, George Weaver is over five. But three did hit the board, I believe. No, two hit the board. Three of them were short. Um, 0 for 2 uh, with Maidens. Um, you know, this horse was bet first time out, ran against a reasonable field, got a 73 buyer. I know that George Weaver has not had anything close to the kind of meets he's had in the past at Saratoga. That still doesn't mean he doesn't have some dangerous bullets in his barn. Of course. I thought this horse might be kind of interesting. <clears throat> so I went for the wise guy route. Okay. Day number 40, Jose Ortiz and... I rather tease are tied. tied at 57. We wish both of them the best of luck. It's been some great riding here. What do you? What was your favorite race of the meet? Favorite race of the meet. Uh, I'm going to go unselfish here, and I'm going to say Rushing Fall winning the Diana. Yeah, my buddy Bob Edward. That was a great race. Just to you know, I think a lot of people. That was a great she's race. She's been such a sensational yep. race mare, the last filly and mare, the last grade one's four years. straight years. Grade one, four straight years. And I think she has that moniker of being a Keeneland horse. And I think that now, finally, a lot of people feel that way. Oh, she's so good at Keeneland. A lot of people? What, three? Yeah, no, plenty of people. You see a lot of, a lot of knuckleheads on social media. Um, I, that was probably... <laughs> you, that was, you too. That was my... I, I do. have them all muted and You have them all muted and blocked. <laughs> um, she was the... That was the moment of the meet for me. Although I could tell you that Latruska, personally, Latruska was a very nice... Who was uh, Latruska again? Shuvi. Last week. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a great effort. I, you know what? For me, maybe Tom Amos and that tremendous performance by Sarah Getty Empress, Empress was yeah. a highlight, and seeing Tom win that Grade One and was, was thrilling. Happy Travers liked his little ton of them. You guys had a nice little top ten yesterday on Saratoga Live. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rushing fall for me though. A lot of credit goes to a lot of hardworking people in the New York Racing Association, not named Andy Serling or my friend Anthony Stabile, um, particularly Glenn Kozak and the people he works with and, you know, keeping this place and being able to open for the meet. Let's be honest, it was always a question whether we could come and a lot of dedication and hard work from a lot of people, and I think there's a lot of them to thank. And the people on the backstretch and all the people that made the race go easy, here. We really have the easy jobs. We have the easiest job in the world. Yeah, we have the greatest job in the world, the easiest job in the world. Uh, obviously, this was a little bit of a different meet. We missed all of you from yep. uh, pillar to post. Yep. Hopefully... Uh, Next year, can walk in here. My buddy Colton will be waiting by the jocks room. Colton's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Our happy friend birthday, Johnny. Colton. Our friend Johnny, who's Johnny, been a loyal friend. Everybody. Who's here every day. And everybody that comes around, we miss you. Yeah, we leave Johnny the Mack, studio. everybody. Yep. Miss all you guys down here. It's, I mean, it's, we're, we're reduced to making fun of Martin Panza. I mean, we want to make fun of other people. He is. We want to we make fun of others. We won't just want to make fun of Martin every yes. day. 
I mean, that's, you know. Thanks to Jose Kendrick so much Ortiz better. for coming out yesterday. Let us make a fun of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, to everybody. Thanks. It was Great a fun job. meet. We appreciate everybody, and we are sorry that you could not join us at Saratoga, but we hope that that situation is better by next summer. And thank you, Looking of course, to, to, to Adam you and everybody over at Saratoga Water yep. for being a fantastic sponsor of Talking Horses here at the spa. I agree with that. It's been a fun meet. It's been a strange meet, but it's been a fun meet, and as John Kakamis's shirt says, the dude abides. The dude abides. Head over to Naira Betts one last time. It's the last time at Saratoga. You know, we'll be back, by the way, on Friday, September 18th at yep. Belmont to start doing it all over again. We will match up with $200 of meet. your initial deposit. Use the promo code SPA. Head over to Naira Betts. You're not a member. Support racing in New York. Play through Naira Betts. The mandatory payout in the Empire Six, $558,777. Races 9 through 14 on the extravaganza today. And finally, the last Sarah to Alive of 2020. Go to Naira.com backslash Sarah to Alive for more details of where to watch. Anthony, thank you so much. Johnny, our cameraman, thanks to him yeah, for being thanks here today. And everybody, truck. and the guys in the truck yep. who put up with us and do all the work behind the scenes and getting those replays up and all the other stuff. Steven? Steve. 40 Days of Steve. 40 Days of Steve. 40 Days of John and Brielle. Tom Law did a great job as Tom well. Tom Law. Yep, we appreciate everybody. We miss Joe Clancy, though. We did. Anyway, John and Brielle, the reprise. Not a reprise. The first time. The official scratches for the Saratoga. Closing day right now.